Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. Hey, baby, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? Fantastic. I'm excited. Got a lot of fun stuff coming up today. We've got a guest that we'll be chatting with on this Wednesday, and it's Dr. David Magnano. Going to be talking about heartburn, and there's an 800% increased risk of cancer if you have heartburn. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Whoa. So we're going to be chatting about how to get rid of heartburn and what you can be doing to not have that. So uh, be listening for more details from Dr. David Magnano. On average, people fear spiders more than they do death. It's funny, we had a story the other day about a person who went off the road because there was a spider in her car, and I got an email after the program and said, hey, I heard the story, but I got a question. Is the spider okay? (laughs) I thought that was pretty funny. So, oh, Travis, thank you. Hey, Charles Dickens wrote and slept facing north, aligning himself with the North Pole. Like with the poles of the earth, that was really important to him. He made sure that when he was sleeping, when he was writing, he was always facing north. Okay. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, it is. All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. Today is Wednesday, September the 28th. Today is Banned Website Awareness Day. How would we be aware if they're banned? I don't know what that means oh, exactly. Oh, band, B-A-N-N-E-D. Yeah. I yeah. thought you meant bands. Oh, like rock like, bands or right. something. Like, yeah, no, band, B-A-N-N-E-D, okay. band. Also, International Right to Know Day. So we just have the right to know, Heidi. It's National Women's Health and Fitness Day today. National Good Neighbor Day. So be a good neighbor. I think, you know, we're pretty darn good neighbors. We try to be. We try to be. We just had a wonderful sweetheart of a neighbor come over and bring us some produce from her garden. That was so nice of her. I love those vegetables that she yeah, brings. Yeah, she's always bringing stuff over. I'm like, you know, maybe we need to be a, a little better neighbors because we don't do that. I've we got don't... some rhubarb I could hey, offer. there you go. Uh, it's also World Rabies Day today. It is Fish Tank Floor Show Night. I don't know what that means. And the one I had to say for last, it is National Drink Beer Day. There you go. So we're going to celebrate. I can celebrate that. There you go. A couple of fun things to celebrate on a Wednesday. Email marketing is affordable and a proven way to grow your business if it's done right. You can stay in contact with your customers to let them know when you have new things to offer. You stay in control the whole time, too. You decide when the messages are sent and you decide what is being said. So you're constantly in control of your business image. You can do this, but don't try it on your own. Team up with one of the biggest names in email marketing, Constant Contact. Sign up for a free trial right now at Radiosavings.com. Sign up now at Radiosavings.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. Could you take a tax deduction for your child if your child has been kidnapped? No, because you're not supporting that child currently. Well, U.S. tax law allows for deductions and credits for parents with children, but the parents of a child who was kidnapped were not sure what to do last year on their taxes, so they asked the IRS for some guidance. They noted they still hold out hope that their child is alive, They are maintaining the child's bedroom and spending money on the search. The IRS has told the unidentified couple that, yes, they may take a deduction for the child, but only in the year that the child was abducted. After that, the deduction is denied until the child is returned. Now, the most disturbing element of the story is the fact that the IRS is so focused on taking your money that even through uh, throwing it, it, they, they even thought about it in advance on how to get your money if your kid is kidnapped. So, But it just makes sense. I mean, the reason that you have a deduction for a child is because that child is in your home and yeah. it costs money to the raise ex- that child. The expenses. So, yeah. Right. Although I do th- agree that they should be able to deduct the expenses of looking for their child yeah. because that's an expense that they weren't planning for and it's not something they want to spend money on, but they have to. How sad is it that we even have to think about this kind of stuff? Yeah, it's I a mean, scary time. It is. And, and, you know, the fact that there's a, a family out there somewhere that's missing their child and th- the last thing on your mind would have to be, what kind of a tax implication is this going to make? You know, I just think that's... They just need to... Government needs to get out of our money altogether. I just think it's really sad that that has to even cross your mind when you're going through something as difficult. This is why a fair tax would be a much better solution. You would never have to think about things like this ever, ever, ever. And you well, can focus on your family. I just think, again, it's it's sad that we even have to ask the question. But it is a question that, you know, I'm glad somebody asked it because now we know. There's the answer from the IRS. And 
You know, it's true because you heard it on the radio. John and Heidi. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. For a criminal, Jose Antonio Campos Claute, <laughs> he chose a strange time to be honest, Heidi. Trying to smuggle drugs into Australia, Jose had a monetary lapse of honest behavior. While filling out the in-flight customs card while on the plane, he inexplicably checked yes on the are you carrying prohibited goods. Oh, man. The 53-year-old Spanish man answered no to every question on his customs card except for one. The one said, are you bringing anything illegal into Australia? Things that are banned, like illicit drugs. (laughs) Yep. Oh, man. (laughs) He pled guilty to one charge of importing a prohibited substance. And there's not a... A charge. What is that called? A Freudian slip? I think so. Isn't that like what that. that's called? His would be like more like a Freudian, you know, check mark. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's kind of funny. So, uh, on Jose Antonio Campos Claute, uh, at least he chose it, you know, the right time to be honest, but maybe not such a right time for him. Coming up, we've got your moment of duh. That is on the way on the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Now your moment of duh. You want to find out how a restaurant handles complaints? One college professor found out the hard way. A Columbia University Business School professor put 240 New York City restaurants into a panic by sending all 240 of them a letter on Columbia University stationery falsely claiming that he had gotten food poisoning by eating the, at their restaurant. So this was a little experiment that he did. He said he suffered, quote, extended nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal cramps, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and he said that he was eating there with his wife on their anniversary. So why did he do this? He wanted to see how would they handle my complaint. And he's learned how they handle complaints. After combing through their charge records for reservations, many came to the realization that this is a hoax. The school received numerous complaints about the letter. Columbia University apologized to all the restaurants for, quote, egregious, I'm sorry, egregious error in judgment by a junior faculty member That was part of an ill-conceived research project, end quote. The professor's future at the university is unclear at the moment. I don't think that it was a bad idea. I think it was actually kind of an interesting idea because Mm. I understand where these guys are going, wait a minute, what are you you doing? This isn't even real. No, because are they trying to solicit free meals from these businesses? I I think that's a gray area there. I don't think that's a good idea. But the thing that was cool is it was all done in the name of research. And here's the thing I got to say. I'm proud of the restaurants that said, yeah, the day that but you then, okay, said you were so here, then some stupid college professor could go in and rob a bank and say, "I was doing research to oh. try to find out how you would respond to." Wow. You can't you can't allow somebody to slippery slope. to do illegal yeah, actions on the basis of research. This is not okay. You've completely swayed me, Heidi. <laughs> that never happens. Coming up, we've got your scoop of the day. That is on the way. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now your Scoop of the Day. A new campaign by Feeding America and the dairy company Land O Lakes may drastically reduce the amount of pictures of food you see on Instagram. According to Relevant Magazine, delete the what is it here? The delete to feed campaign wants you to turn your food posts into real meals for millions of Americans who are hungry every year. Instagram is full of food posts, they say, but millions of Americans go hungry each year. They say let's delete one hunger or let's delete hunger one photo at a time. The way it works is you connect your Instagram to a website and you choose food pictures and then delete them. For each deleted picture, Lando Lakes will donate 11 meals to people in need. The goal is 2.75 million meals donated. I got to say this. Uh, very rarely do I take photos of food, but I have friends that do. I'm not on Instagram. Yeah, I don't get that. But, I, I, you know, it's one thing. Like, I took a photo of, a, like, a birthday cake. That's a different story. But just like a regular, here's what I'm eating tonight. I never understood that. 
<laughs> there are people that do it. So you just have to go on and look at these pictures and delete them? It doesn't, I don't know. Do you have to pay to delete I, pictures? I have no idea. I would assume because I don't. otherwise I would go on and delete them all and there say, go. there you go, Land Lakes. Give everybody <laughs> some food. <laughs> I'm sure there's more to it than that. Hey, burglars broke into the training facility of a Cyprus soccer team and they stole 70 pair of cleats. Every single shoe that the soccer team had from the locker room. So they stole all their cleats. Would all you right. want a bunch of stinky shoes? Not at all. Me neither. Carl, and you can't really even say, hey, these are all from the uh, soccer team. These are these shoes were worn by the soccer right. team. Because if you do that, you can get caught for being the yeah. numbskull burglar. So I think that was kind of a dumb heist, wasn't it? it absolutely. Well, all, all heists are yeah, dumb. Pretty much. Hey, Carl Smith has taken the witness stand in a Cook County, Illinois court uh, confessed to a murder that his twin brother had been in jail for since 2003. So his twin brother has been in jail since 2003, and he finally came forward and said, I did it. Oh. Problem is, prosecutors say it's a little too convenient. It seems Mr. Smith also just executed his own final appeal for a 99-year prison oh. sentence for a 2008 home invasion. So prosecutors say he's got nothing to lose by confessing because he's going to be in jail for the rest of his life no matter what. Meanwhile, his confession doesn't exactly jive with eyewitness accounts of the crime. Family members admit both brothers went by the street named Twin and dressed alike and often pretended to be each other. A judge will decide if his brother will get a new trial. His mother says he wouldn't lie about that. So that is kind of crazy. His brother's been in jail since 2003, and now he's saying he's innocent. It was yeah, me. Yeah, well, but I he agree also, with them. He's going to be in prison for the rest of his life anyway, so why not get his brother yeah. out? What do you have to lose? You know, and, and uh, I don't know. Interesting story. Even worse. And than, if they were both in a freaking gang to begin with, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I, I'd keep them both in there. There you go. I don't know. It's just one of those stories that make you wonder. Hey, even worse than Facebook, the worst thing for your relationship is a lack of sleep. A study suggests that a lack of sleep tends to prioritize ourselves over our partner, and then we become complete jerks, Heidi. So if I'm tired and crabby, that's why. That's because, like uh, every day. I'm always tired and crabby. Because so, you don't sleep. Hey, hey, why don't you stay on your own side of the <laughs> counter? Over there? Got a problem with you invading my space. We, we're married to each other, and we work together, so sometimes things get interesting. Anyway, they say we forget little things like saying thank you when we're tired. So Heidi, I just want to say thank you. Oh, you're welcome. For everything. The study out of UC Berkeley found that if you sleep like a baby, but your partner does not, one of you is going to probably end up grouchy, and it might even turn into both of you. And the CDC, Center for Disease Control, yes, sent out a message this week that's really important. You ready for this? Sure. They want to remind us that kissing our pet chickens can spread salmonella. <laughs> what the hell? Is this, a, is this a thing? Is there a huge outbreak of salmonella? How'd you get it? Well, I was smooching my pet chicken, and uh, I just don't see that. How is, this a, how is this a topic that we should even be wasting time on? I don't get it. All how right. can you get salmonella from kissing a live chicken? I, I have no idea. It came from... I have no raw clue. chicken meat. Apparently, there's raw chicken and chicken. I'm not sure. I just think <laughs> it's a sad story, so that I shouldn't. So laugh. bizarre. For those of you who've caught in a salmonella from kissing your chicken, I apologize for laughing at your terrible uh, <laughs> predicament you're in. Coming up, we've got a special guest that is on the way on the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. When it comes to politics, quite often you have an opinion, especially for this election. How would you like a platform to let your opinion be heard? PoliticalStorm.com is that platform. It's a website with news from both sides, and you can chime in on any story, and you can add your own stories. You may even be invited to join me on my podcast for a chance to share your opinion, whether we agree or not. Sign up today at PoliticalStorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice as well. PoliticalStorm.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Got a special guest joining us right now, Dr. David Magnano. And we've talked a couple of times. Uh, always a fun guy to talk to and always very informative. And today we're going to be talking about heartburn. And it's crazy because there's a new study that shows heartburn increases your cancer risk by 800%. That's not good. First of all, let's say hello to Dr. David Magnano. How are you, sir? Good. Good morning to you. Well, good to have you on the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, this is a very concerning study because... There are probably a lot of people listening right now that experience heartburn, and they're going, whoa, whoa, wait, what was this, 800%? That's kind of kind of scary, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot to be concerned about because the, the amount of heartburn that's being 
experienced by uh, people, it's almost become like a normal thing. It's, it's not normal at all. It certainly has become common, but it's not normal at all. And the problem is, is heartburn is just really a sign that something in the stomach is not digesting properly. And then the stomach is overworking to try to digest that. And one of the side effects of that dysfunction is an increased cause of cancer. So it's pretty alarming from that standpoint. So this is really a symptom of something else. Heartburn itself is really a symptom of a different problem. Exactly. Basically, when digestion occurs, it's really as simple as this. We put something into our stomach, and it should be broken down into little pieces, uh, little pieces of vitamins and nutrients and minerals and proteins that then feed the cells. Now, it goes through the intestines and all that so it can be properly metabolized. But basically, that's the simplicity of digestion. And what happens when things are not broken down, the stomach continues to churn. It continues to generate acid. And this, this activity, this overworking of the stomach, this activity and increased acid, the side effect of that is actually heartburn. And then heartburn is just really when some of the um, acid starts to sneak through uh, the stomach sphincter, which is a circular muscle that should keep everything in the stomach when it's churning and trying to break down and digest this food. And then, of course, that acid and this increased activity puts a strain on the other tissues that are, are surrounding that area, and that's where we get the increase in cancer. So, um, really, if, if we can improve digestion, we minimize the side effect of heartburn, and in doing so, we're, we should be able to reduce the, uh, the, uh, the, the thing that leads to the breakdown and the cancer in that. You're talking about replacing antacids because a lot of people go, oh, hey, I have a heartburn. I'm going to fix it by taking antacids. But really, you're saying, no, again, that's a symptom. That's like saying my check engine light came on. I got to fix the light. No, check. Fix the engine. Don't fix the light. So by taking <laughs> antacids, you're fixing the light instead of the engine. So you're saying you should replace the antacids with the actual solution. And what is that? The actual solution is digestive enzymes. And the beauty of nature is that there are digestive enzymes in any food that we eat. So here's where it becomes a problem. Um, we obviously have to cook our protein foods. Our protein foods are meat and pork and fish and chicken, those are the protein foods, right? Very important to the diet, but we, as soon as you heat a food over 118 or 119 degrees, it kills off the enzyme within that food. So we're sort of working a bit against nature with that. I'm not, I'm not uh, suggesting anybody not cook their meats and their pork and their chicken. What I am suggesting is that if we can increase the number of enzymes in the stomach, then the stomach will start to properly digest as it should, and we won't get the side effect of heartburn and then the other things that that would actually lead to. It sort of snowballs into that situation. And you're totally correct. When you say, you know, the engine light comes on, you know, you, you, you change the bulb or you get rid of the bulb or something like that, and you never fix the engine, we know that we're going to have more trouble with that engine at some point if we ignore that. And that's all that heartburn is. It's just a red flag. It's just a sign or a symptom that something's not working the way it should. And we do tend to try to eliminate the symptom with an antacid, but that doesn't do anything to help the problem. It, it, it actually makes the problem worse. Now, I'm seeing in the info here that I'm not supposed to eat meat and starches in the same meal. So how do you, how do you have a meal that doesn't have meat and starches? Isn't, isn't that kind of a weird meal then? Well, it is a weird meal, but here's what we know. We have learned over the years that, that protein sources, you know, the beef, chicken, pork, those types of things, are the most difficult for the stomach to break down. And then when you put starch in there, what happens is the body goes toward, starch could be, you know, uh, corn or potatoes or anything like that, bread or pasta, any, anything that's, that's considered a starch. So the body will actually work towards breaking down the easiest thing first, which would be the starches, which then leaves the proteins even more difficult to break down, and that creates this overactivity and dysfunction within the stomach, which then again leads to the heartburn. So there's a very simple solution for this. We have, we have looked at this from a number of different angles, and we came up with really the simplest solution that doesn't really fight against the body, it actually works with the systems within the body, and it actually handles the situation in really, you know, eight or eight or nine cases out of ten very easily. And what is that? The 
solution is to put more digestive enzymes into the diet. So if we're going to cook our foods, which we are going to do that, right, we're going to cook our protein sources, yes. there's two ways to increase digestive enzymes into the diet. First is to add as many raw fruits and vegetables as you can to your meal. So let's say you have a big steak. Rather than having a baked potato with it, which is going to make digestion worse, have a salad, have a little bowl of fruit, something that is not cooked, and in the process of not cooking, we're getting the benefits of those enzymes. Now, that's not always possible, so we over the years have used a great product. It's called a Absorbaid. We get it from a company called Nature Sources, and it's basically ground-up fruits and vegetables with a high potency of digestive enzymes. So it's all natural. It doesn't need to, you know, conflict with anybody's normal health routine, whether they're on medication or not. It's basically ground-up fruits and vegetables. So because of the busy lifestyle that a lot of our patients have, we just encourage them to take absorb aid with their meal and in doing so we're putting a lot of digestive enzymes in and in doing that we're allowing the stomach to actually break down the food which is its job without all the side effects of the acid and the heartburn and all that stuff and then the the other the other problems that, that leads to when it's un, unchecked or unhandled so this is kind of like eating the fruits and veggies but it's doing it in a way where you're you're just getting it through this product instead of the actual fruits and veggies yeah And I'm a real fan of just trying to, you know, like use your food as your medicine, but I'm also realistic. You know, I mean, I'm not having raw fruits and vegetables with every one of my meals. My lifestyle just doesn't allow that to occur. But I'm definitely not punishing my digestive system or my stomach and causing a problem by not getting the enzymes in. So if I'm not getting the raw fruits and vegetables in with my meal, I'm taking Absorbate. And absorbate again, is just a natural source of digestive enzymes. It works with the body. Where do we find something like that? Is that at the grocery store? Where do you find absorbate? Oh, the best way, and I'll tell you, one of, the, one of the things our patients love about working with this company called Nature Sources is you go on the website, which is www.naturesources.com, and that's with two S's in the center. You go on the website. There's also a 1-800 number. Uh, you, you can, you can uh, just request some free samples. You don't have to pay anything. Um, they just send you out some samples. And the beauty of a good quality digestive enzyme, because we, we do a lot of health and wellness stuff in our office, and we're promoting different supplements like vitamin D and different things. But with a good quality digestive enzyme, within a meal or two or three, within a couple of days, you're going to notice that your digestive process is working better, even if you don't have symptoms. We take care of a lot of older patients. They feel very run down after they eat. That's just a sign their body's not able to break down the food. And, of course, when they then they avoid eating, and that leads to other problems. So we've added absorbate to many of the older patients' diets. But if you happen to have heartburn and you stop the antacids and you start the digestive enzymes, within a couple of days you'll start to see, I'm not saying it's going to be gone, but you'll start to see that it's actually working better. Nice. And, of course, if anybody's on prescription, you know, antacids and drugs like that, they always have to check with their doctor and see how that goes. I'm not, I'm not uh, giving any medical advice from anybody that's on a, under care of a doctor. But sure. um, to add the digestive enzymes to the meal, and, and eight or nine uh, out of ten cases, their heartburn goes away within a week. And I've got that website. Once again, it's naturessources.com. You said there's also a toll-free number you could call for free samples? Yes, you know, and unfortunately, uh, I'm not at my desk. I don't have the phone number in front of me. No, that's okay. I think I have it here. It, yeah, here it is. It's in the info that you guys sent over. It's 1-800-827-7656. And I'll tell you what, I'll make it really easy. I'll put all of this on our Facebook page as well, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. So we'll make it easy for you. Dr. Magnano, thank you so much for chatting with us. And again, it was absolutely shocking when I read the headline that shows heartburn increases cancer risk by 800%. And I thought, you know, I want to I want to chat with this guy about this because I know I've experienced heartburn and I'll bet everybody listening knows at least somebody that has. So that's kind of a scary a scary number, 800%. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and in healthcare, I've been in practice for a number of years, it's over 30 years, and in healthcare, we come across some simple things whether it's changes in your lifestyle, whether it's, you know, a supplement like Absorbate, there's some simple things that fall into this category of being a no-brainer. And because of the food quality and the lifestyle and the diet choices that that we are making, especially in this country, 
adding some digestive enzymes to their meal is very smart. And you can do that once again with raw fruits and vegetables, or you can do that with Absorbate. And we've had this great success with Absorbate over the years. Again, the website is naturesources.com. Dr. Magnano, thank you again. It's been a pleasure to chat. Oh, thanks for having me. I enjoyed talking with you. And I'm sure we'll chat again. Anytime there's something, uh, when I read a headline like that, I'll certainly be reaching out again to get some more information. It's kind of scary stuff. Again, uh, Dr. David Magnano has been our guest today. I've got a link to all of the info if if you'd like to get some more information. I've got a link to all of that and the phone number and everything at facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. This is the world's first and only seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Since I endorsed Lottolicious, I have won something every single draw. When you join, you'll be giving them the set of numbers that you want them to play, and that's what they will play for you. You don't have to worry about running to the store to buy your tickets. They take care of all that. So if you're looking for the best way to play the lottery, go to RadioLottoPool.com and join today. Again, that's RadioLottoPool.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Ketchup originated in China. I would have never guessed that. Really? Yeah. You don't think of, I can't think of a single thing from a Chinese restaurant that I would put ketchup on. Can you? Would you put ketchup on rice? That doesn't sound good. I know people who probably would, but I would not. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? There are 691 drinking fountains in the Pentagon. It's a lot of drinking fountains. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? In 1984, San Diego Padre Steve Garvey became the first first baseman to finish the season with a perfect fielding average. So there you go. Okay. Uh, Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The peak season for raspberry production is July through September. I like raspberries. So we're wrapping up our raspberry season now. And our final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Caterpillars. You know those little dudes that turn into butterflies? They have about 2,000 muscles in their body. Really? Little caterpillars, too. Yeah, that's, that's kind of crazy. They, I wonder if they still have that many once they become butterflies. I don't know. doesn't say anything about that. Uh, so there's a fun fact for you that I don't know on a Wednesday. John and Heidi. Email marketing is affordable and a proven way to grow your business if it's done right. You can stay in contact with your customers to let them know when you have new things to offer. You stay in control the whole time, too. You decide when the messages are sent and you decide what is being said. So you're constantly in control of your business image. You can do this, but don't try it on your own. Team up with one of the biggest names in email marketing, Constant Contact. Sign up for a free trial right now at Radiosavings.com. Sign up now at Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi show on a Wednesday. My beautiful wife and I uh, work together here every day. And, and uh, one of the things that's different about the two of us is she's the oldest child in her family. Yes. I'm the middle child in my family. Now, there's a, uh, a rumor that firstborn children are smarter. So do you think it's true since you're a firstborn child? Or do oh, you think... no. My brother is way smarter than I am. Your brother is awesome, by the way. Mm-hmm. He was at our house the other day. And on the way here, uh, he stopped and pulled somebody out of a rollover vehicle. Yeah. And there's a rollover. And he, he stopped on the side of the road, pulled the guy out, saved this dude's life. Then he comes over and just, you know, he's having a hamburger telling me, <laughs> telling me this. Kind of like he just, you know... Like it was nothing, you know. I was like, oh yeah, well I stopped and you know pulled the guy out and there's smoke coming out. And he's a, he's a law enforcement officer, he is. so he, and even and when they always put the other people's needs above their own, and I I think it's phenomenal. I'm even very, when very he proud was off duty, he's st- uh, when you're a, when you're an awesome officer like him, you're always on duty. That's right. He didn't have to stop, but he did. No. He went out of his way and stopped and helped, and I thought that was really cool. Anyway, back to this whole firstborn being smarter stuff. As if hand-me-downs and the fact that only three baby pictures exist of you, there's more bad news for younger siblings. A new study suggests that firstborns may have gotten favored status in the brain department as well. Tiffany L. Frank, a doctoral candidate at Adelphia University, recently led a study that suggested birth order does make a difference when it comes to brains and personality. Older siblings have higher aptitude and overall ranked intelligence, potentially because they got more attention from their parents earlier. But there is an upside for younger siblings. Research found that there's generally more that the younger ones are generally more outgoing and more competitive with higher overall GPAs. The reason, in theory, having to uh, maybe compete to get parents' love actually helps make you a little more well-rounded. 
Does this mean our parents have been lying to us about this when they say, I love you all equally? No, there's no proof of that. So there you go, Heidi. I don't know how they could have a higher GPA if the older one is supposedly smarter. Because we have to try harder. You know, you can be really smart, but if you don't apply yourself because everything comes easy, that, that could actually be That's a true. slippery slope for you there. Coming up, we got more fun stuff on the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Let's talk business. If you're in business, you need a website. Come on, it's 2016. Do you really think the internet thing is not going to catch on? Many business owners that don't have a website think it's just too expensive. Well, now it's not. You can actually build a website set up for less than $30 a month. If you need help designing it or just laying something out, we're here to help you. Get a free trial right now at radiosavings.com. You can actually build the site and see it online for free during this trial. So why not check it out at radiosavings.com. A British woman says that she has cured her chronic fatigue by resorting to do-it-yourself brain surgery. What? (laughs) Yeah, she drilled a hole in her head. What? Yeah. Heather Perry, 29, (sighs) performed an ancient technique of trepanning or trepanning or however you say it. Anyway, it's the cutting away of a section of the scalp and drilling into the skull to overcome this uh, ailment that she had uh, referred to as ME. And I know why, because I can't pronounce all of this. It's like... Megalic infinomyelitis says something. Okay. So anyway, let's just call it ME. It leaves sufferers feeling permanently permanently exhausted. So she decided she was going to fix this. Oh my gosh! By drilling a two centimeter hole to allow blood to flow easily around the brain, it almost went wrong when she drilled too far. Oh my gosh! And penetrated a membrane protecting her brain. British doctors refused to help Perry with the ancient procedure, so she flew to the U.S where she was given some medical advice and did it herself. She performed the operation under local anesthetic in front of a mirror and a camera crew. This oh, was widely spread back in the goodness. Middle Ages to treat said, oh, I can't even imagine this. Uh, back in the Middle Ages, they <sighs> said it will help relieve the e- or release the evil spirits from the possessed. So, yeah, I think we've come a long way since the Middle Ages. Let's not drill holes in our own head. I think that's a bad plan. All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. <laughs> It's 2016, Heidi. It is. And we can do all kinds of crazy things now that are more commonplace than they used to be. Like, at one point, uh, you got married at a church. That was, like, where you got married. You wouldn't get married at other places. Nowadays, you can get married almost anywhere. Yeah. And somebody just did. Uh, Kind of a bizarre wedding. Newlyweds Jason and Nina Payne treated their guests to a reception at the KFC. (laughs) The wedding party. Tucked into a no-frills breakfast of crispy chicken wings, drumsticks, fries, and cola, Nina said that she and her husband just wanted to do, quote, something different. Well, there you go. It the, certainly is. The groom raised a toast with fizzy cola, and the store manager agreed that it may be, quote, the oddest thing I've ever seen, end quote. <laughs> yeah. You know, here's the thing. If you guys like that, if that's your kind of thing, go for it, man. I think that's cool. So, uh... It doesn't say that the wedding was there, though. So this, this you would totally do that. You the, love KFC. I do, but every time we go buy one, let's go to KFC. I'm like, I hate KFC. <laughs> She's not a fan. I'm like, look, are you hungry? We gotta get stuff. <laughs> I remember one time we were on vacation. I went and got something to eat you and left did. you guys because you didn't want to go. I'm like, fine, I'll just drop you off. I'm going back. I'm hungry. <laughs> I was like, you just ate. Why are we eating again? I'm always hungry. That's my problem. Coming up, we got some good news, and we got another great story before then. That's also kind of good news. It's on the way. When it comes to politics, quite often you have an opinion, especially for this election. How would you like a platform to let your opinion be heard? PoliticalStorm.com is that platform. It's a website with news from both sides, and you can chime in on any story, and you can add your own stories. You may even be invited to join me on my podcast for a chance to share your opinion, whether we agree or not. Sign up today at PoliticalStorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice as well. PoliticalStorm.com. John and Heidi. If it's time for you to buy a new car, you might want to do it this month, according to the story that I have here. I posted all the details on our Facebook page. It says, according to the story, this is the best time of year to buy a new car. According to the story, they say dealers, I don't know this for sure, I'm just reading what I have here. Dealers have been dropping prices on their cars in September, making it the best month to buy a car if you're trying to move up a model year or whatever. They say September is typically a good month to buy a car. Here's why. Because a lot of new models make their debut in the fall, and they're trying to get rid of last yep, year's stuff. Yeah, they're trying stuff. to clear out the lot. 
Add that to the fact that auto sales have been a little softer this year, and they say that leaves consumers in the driver's seat to get a good deal, according to the story. Officials say the added pressure uh, to sell means more incentives for consumers in the form of really good financing deals as well, and cash back deals and rebate deals and bonus cash deals. I'm not uh, telling you to go and buy a car if you don't need a car, because that would make no sense whatsoever. Right. But I do have the story listed at Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. So if you want to read all about it, they're just saying that, hey, if you're going to do it anyway, this could be a good time to do it. We're probably not going to be doing that anytime soon. But uh, if we were, you know, this would be a good good time. (laughs) Here's the thing that's funny. We have a car that was making noise Uh, as we were driving. It sounded like a helicopter. Oh, it was terrible. (laughs) It was bad. And I just got to say thank you to my mechanic for fixing that and taking good care of it because uh, now it sounds good. So thank you. My mechanic is a good guy. (laughs) Now I don't sound like I'm driving down the road in a helicopter anymore. (laughs) Thanks, Wally. All right. Coming up, we've got some good news. That is on the way. And uh, we're going to wrap things up around here with some uh, chat about coupons. Back in the news. And it's good news about coupons. Stick around. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to wrap things up around here with some good news. And I think this is pretty good news. It says clipping coupons, for most of us, is a way to put money back into our own pockets. Right, Heidi? Sure. But for one Virginia woman, she is using extreme couponing tactics for the greater good. Not just for her, but she's buying groceries on the cheap and she's feeding the homeless. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. According to Today.com, Lauren Perrier rounds up Sunday circular coupons. She finds coupons online. She enlists the help of friends and family to scour for deals And then she and fellow volunteers hit the stores before work, after work, during lunch breaks, whenever they can get around to uh, to doing the shopping. And it says there are cap limits on certain promotions, so they might have to make five trips to get everything they want to get. But once the stockpile of ingredients is ready, they turn out tasty, healthy meals for a a local homeless population. They set up tables and serve dishes right on the street to any unsheltered people in need of food. Often. Anywhere from 100 people to 500 people at a time. Wow. How crazy is that? That's awesome. And, you know, they're they're utilizing what they refer to as extreme couponing to to help make this possible. Without that, they wouldn't be able to afford it. So there was a show that we saw on TV. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. Where these people did couponing. It was a contest. They would go in their basement and they they had. had Yeah, a warehouse. Yeah. I was like, tune in next week when I'm on Hoarders. <laughs> Those things should also be donated. I mean, if you're getting it for nothing, yeah. I mean, they get they run all of these coupons through yeah. and their bills like 12 cents or something yeah. ridiculous like that. You don't need 40 tubes of toothpaste. Yeah. Donate those. Well, and, and the thing is that that is what they refer to as extreme couponing. I've never yeah. I've never been into it. I feel bad if I have two coupons. You know, I get up there. I'm like, I think I got some coupons in here somewhere. <laughs> I got some coupons. <laughs> Can I get can I get a nickel off this ramen noodles with my yeah, coupons? Yeah, see, I, my coupons I just, uh, are never that no. good. I, I never <laughs> walk away with. Teach me what you know, people. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I don't think I want to know because I, I don't need more stuff than I already have. Oh, I just don't. Mm. I don't have the time to do all that. No. Hey, if you'd work. like to know more about these folks that are putting extreme couponing to good use, I've got the story at facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday.